Okay, in this video we're just going to look at how we can repurpose um, standard horizontal footage for um, social channels um, that use vertical video. So to kind of preface this, um, I shoot most of my video in 4K with any project that requires archive footage for the client. So that allows me to get sort of good longevity out of the footage and allows me to do things like crops, pans, and even transitions in post with no kind of loss of quality when I'm delivering footage in HD. And um, although a lot of people, you know, are kind of push for 4K and even 6 and 8K now, I still find there's a lot of clients that still want things delivered in HD. So if they do, I'll still shoot it in 4K anyway. And like I say, you know, that, that just allows me to be able to come back and I know the footage is reusable. And um, I know there's an additional cost there in terms of both uh, processing power on your machine and the space that you need to store the footage on. But for me, I include that in my client costs. So they pay for the um, they pay for the storage of the um, files for archive footage. And in terms of a machine, I'm quite lucky because I've got quite a good machine for editing. So, but you can always use things like proxies if um, you know 4K is is difficult to uh, to use on your machine, then that's kind of a way you can get around that. Um, so the kind of first way we could do this, we've got um, essentially like a master track just of some footage that I've shot. Uh, it's a mix of just camera footage and drone footage and it's broken up into just a few different sections of uh, sort of shoots I did throughout the day. Um, and nothing's really been applied to it, it's just a master sequence of usable shots. So the first kind of way we could do it, we could either resave this master sequence as a vertical master sequence, so you know just call it master vertical or something like that. Or we can come in and we can duplicate the sequence and just do a similar thing, just mark it up so we know what it is. So it's master sequence vertical. And then we can kind of double click on that and open it up. And then we know we're in the sequence there. And then we can come up to our sequence settings. And you can see here we've got um, 4K, so 3840 by 2160, and that's um, 16 by 9. So st fairly standard kind of widescreen video. And um, what what we could do is just swap those two figures around and then we would end up with 9 by 16 video. But the, the problem you've got there is that the, um, the height of the video isn't actually going to fill that frame. So you'll end up having to scale the footage and yeah, it will be really high resolution, but because you've had to scale it, you're gonna have a you know loss in quality there. So that's not really something I would kind of recommend for this. Um, you can work out the you know the the maximum that you'd be able to do for um, sixteen by nine. Uh, sorry, by nine by sixteen. But what I tend to do just for um, for this kind of stuff because it's usually social content and I tend not to ever come back to it again. It's usually one off stuff. So I would do um, nineteen twenty by ten eighty. So that's sixteen by nine. So if we just do the opposite of that, ten eighty by nineteen twenty, and then we've got our vertical 9 by 16 um, so you know just the opposite of a HD timeline so if we hit OK then it's going to tell us all the previews are going to change and we can just hit OK and again we haven't overwritten anything we've got our widescreen sequence we've got our vertical sequence um, <laughs> obviously the clips don't work very well for this but we, we can kind of get to that and, and, and we'll work on it so We've got our first clip, which, you know, the people are in the right place, so that's a good start. But what we'll need to do is start to scale these so they fit in nicely. So um, I think on this, 90% is about, uh, I mean, 89 doesn't look like there's any crop, but 90% I think is a safe region. So I can set that one clip to 90%. I know that's going to work across all my clips because they're all shot at the same size. And what we can do is just come onto the motion part here. None of this has been adjusted. The clips just sat sort of dead center, no other adjustments. And you can just come down and copy or command or control C. And then what we'll do is zoom right out, well not right out, but enough. And then I'll just highlight all of these clips. And then because we've got that motion um, part copied into our clipboard, we can now do uh, Command and V on a Mac or Control and V on a PC. And then you can see here all of these have just been applied with a motion um, 
a new motion effect. So if we come on to that, you can see everything's at 90 now. So everything's been scaled roughly to how we want it. And then it is literally just a case of going through and we sort of said the boat one wasn't so good. So it's literally just a case of going through and um, squaring up all the clips. Like we don't have any real, any kind of vertical uh, scope to go. We can zoom, we, we're zoomed out as far as we could go. You could zoom in more if you wanted to, because you, you know, you can go all the way to a hundred percent obviously, and that's still full quality. Um, but most of it will just be kind of moving the frame from from left to right really not all clips are going to work because i've obviously shot this with the intention of it being widescreen but some of the clips i had in mind that this can be a vertical clip because i'd shot it very wide um so some of them will just be deleted some of them i know are going to work and i i had it you know in mind when i was shooting it so there'll be bits that get kept and bits that kind of get thrown and you can do, um, you know, you can move the position as things go. If, you know, say for example, with this one, we've got the boat going across the screen. I've got a few where there's horses moving and things like that. So um, it, it's just a case of moving these things to um, to fit. And um, that that's it really. I mean, um, that, that that is essentially all you need to do, but if um, you're finding obviously that is um, quite a lot of effort and it's taking too long, then what you can do is if you come on to, so we'll come back to our master sequence, which is our, um, uh, this one here. And if we do uh, auto reframe sequence, so all we've done is right clicked on here and we've got auto right reframe sequence. And then we can click okay on there and then um, essentially it's just going to it renames it to what you've got here so um, you've got options for um, vertical 4x5 vertical 9x16 which is what we've just done or square 1x1 one one. Um, and horizontal horizontal 16 by 9 but um, you know we, we don't need to do that because that's what our footage is in so if we were to pick the same one 9x16 you, you can see up here that it just renames them to roughly what you're doing which is what we did anyway um, motion tracking um, that's because the auto reframe is actually going to do all of this um, you know like keeping the boat in shot keeping a horse in shot or whatever it may be it actually does all that for you so you can select what motion you'd like for that if you want it to be slow or if you want it to frame quickly or we can just leave that as default um, and then this bit is essentially if you are not on a master track and you've already done loads of reframing, you've, uh, you know, you've got kind of zoom effects with scale, position, panning and that kind of thing. Um, if you if you do this one, essentially all of that is going to be gone. Um, so if you have done a lot of um, work within the kind of motion section here, um, it's probably best to actually nest the clips, but then the only thing you'll lose, you can see it says here, you'll lose your transitions. Um, but it's probably easier to change that than it is to change all of this on every clip if you've already done a lot of work. So um, for this one, we're just going to do the top one because we've done nothing to these. They're all just sat in the middle. Um, we do actually have, um, on, on these, we had done this uh, scale change, but in our master sequence, none of that's happened. So we'll come in and we'll just redo that. So auto reframe sequence, nine by 16, top option, default, and then we'll just hit create. Um, and then this can take sometimes a little while to do. Um, you can see down here, we've got like a little progress bar of it going across. I actually did it before, so it would um, <laughs> save a little bit of this into kind of memory. So I'm hoping it will go through fairly quickly, but. I've got quite a lot of clips, they're quite big. It's um, it's essentially doing like a lot of calculations to um, try and reframe these clips. And it, if there's one main focus of the clip, so say there's a person in the middle of the clip or um, there's like the, the one with the boat going across the clip, um, this can be really effective because it, it's really good at actually reframing the um, clips. But say you've got two, um, uh, two things that are kind of the focal point of the video and they they can't both fit into the vertical 
then obviously that's down to you to decide, you know, actually, you know, this thing on the left is more important than the thing on the right. Or you could even break the two clips down, so duplicate it. You can have one bit of video with the thing on the left and then one bit with the thing on the right. You know, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, just reframing and having two clips. Um, but yeah, it's um, <laughs> this is a good, it is a really good tool. Um, sometimes I'll admit I do find it easier to just do it myself because um, you've got a lot of custom control over it then. You know exactly what you're doing and yeah, you know, you can bin clips that you know aren't going to work anyway and it saves this sitting around for auto reframe to go through a load of clips that you just think, well, that's not going to work anyway, so I'll just remove that. And it, it maybe makes it a little bit neater, you know, you've got, you do have that bit more kind of finite control over your project. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's let this go and we'll kind of see how it does with some of these clips. I'll, um, I'll just speed this part up because um, it, this could go for a while. Okay, so now that's completed and we've got our auto reframe sequences all in this folder here. And you can see this is the one we'd made before, so it's <laughs> slightly confusing because we, we've already done it once manually. But um, what it will do is it will create this folder. So we've got auto reframe sequences. We can open this up 9 by 16. It's already opened it anyway for us, but um, we can go through and we can see things like it centered the boat there, it centered that. Um, it, you know, it, that clip, the boat was essentially out to the left and you, you couldn't see it at all. So you can see that this has actually done quite a nice job kind of coming in and um, doing all these uh, doing all these adjustments for us. So um, you can see here we've got, um, uh, because we've got um, auto reframe applied, um, this is actually all sort of, uh, taken out now um, it, it, it's kind of disabled because we're using auto reframe um, you, you could do additional um, additional work on top of this if you wanted to or you can just un, undo the kind of auto reframe work if you want like I say this is kind of put together as um, it, it's a very quick way of just sort of saying okay I just want to try and repurpose this really quickly so it's um it, it could be something of value to you it might be that you want more control and you kind of do it yourself um what we can do we can jump into the sequence settings and you can see actually um what i'd mentioned before about me using uh the 1080 by 1920 um one sort of nice thing about the auto reframe i mean <laughs> you can work this out yourself i mean you know it now anyway for 4k footage looking at this but um, it actually does it on the kind of maximum that it can. So um, it gives you uh, a 1215 by 2160, nine by 16 frame. So that's as big as it can be in vertical. Um, it's possible that you'll come up against like a couple of, um, a, a couple of little problems if um, some social media networks might not like the footage that big, they might want it a little bit smaller. Um, but that's always something you can do, you know, there's, there's not difficult to kind of recompress it in a different size. So um, essentially it's done like a lot of the hard work for you here, especially on such a big, um, you know, a big uh, kind of timeline like this. It's, it's done a lot in this sequence. Um, so, yeah, hopefully um, that's been helpful. If you've got any questions about it, just, um, yeah, drop a comment below. And, um, yeah, if, if it's helped, give the video a like and... Um, if you want to see more content like this, then um, please subscribe to the channel.